what is up guys we are back with another episode episode six episode six we did it guys thank you every single one of you thank you to every single one of you who have just supported who has um not just supportive, but who has listened. Honestly, there have been people listening in. That's um, that's just assuring to me because I'm like, okay, that means people want to hear what I have to say. And, and it's obviously not about me and it's about God. But if you want to hear what I have to say, then you're ultimately hearing uh, about God and the gospel and the good news and what he wants for us and what he wants us to know and what he wants us to learn. And that's how we grow because this is about growing together. This is about challenging one another, right? And just growing in our spiritual walk. And so if you followed this entire time, I just hope that whatever has been said, whatever has been, um, you know, spoken through in every single one of these episodes up to now, that it has resonated with you, that it has uplifted you, that it has edified you, that whatever you needed in the moment, whatever season you are in, that whatever I've talked about so far or what God and I and the Holy Spirit have talked about so far has helped you in some way because that's it's helped me and I love it. Because every time I record and every time I, I think of something that I'm going to talk about is very personal. And actually, I was I volunteer at my church um, every Tuesday. And so at 2 p.m., uh, 2 to 5, not that that matters, but yeah, I volunteer at my church every Tuesday and I'm there in the afternoons. And so I love it. One, with the schedule that I have right now, right, with the nails business, um, it's not as like full time actively always busy. So it's a nice way to get out of the house. And then what better place to go to if not the church, right? Because that's where their offices are at. And so I'm at church. And so I get to talk to leaders and I get to talk to the the, the staff and the pastoral leads and all of that. And throughout that, you know, of course, some have heard about my podcast. And I was actually talking to uh, Pastor Tina, who um, Tina Blunt, and she also has her own podcast, which is called Be Blunt. And I believe she's on Spotify. I'm not sure if she's on Apple. I should have maybe asked her, but she's on Spotify. It's called Be Blunt and it's B-L-O-U-N-T because that's how you spell her last name. So Be Blunt. And um, I will be honest, I have not gotten the opportunity to listen to it, but I will. Okay, I will. But I'm telling you so that you can go listen to it because she is such a powerhouse. I mean, that woman, when you speak to her, she's just Holy Spirit filled, Holy Spirit fire constantly. And, and, but also encouraging and nurturing, you know, cause she's a mom and she just has so much to, to, to give honestly. And so I was talking to her the other day. So anyways, before I go on to the story, listen to her podcast and what she does is it's short. It's actually short. Um, she called them nuggets. So they're because they're I, I want to say they're about like 20 to 25 minutes long. So they're not um, super long, like normal podcasts, right, that they can range from the 20 something minutes. But they also go from like an hour to like maybe like an hour and a half. Like it all depends. But hers are just for, you know, those short nuggets, as she said. So go listen to them. So back to the story. So I had seen her this past Tuesday and she was asking me about the podcast and how everything was going. And I was like, you know, it's going good. And she was telling me about her podcast and how she does everything um, to up to recording and um, how she just gets with the Holy Spirit and to, to know what she's going to talk about, as do I. Right. So I was telling her that I that's what I do. And so um, I was just telling her how I've just been feeling and I've been honest with you guys. And I think I've shared it throughout these episodes that I've been in this place of um, heaviness and dryness and distraction and all of that that has gotten I feel like overwhelming at times when doing the podcast because again I want it to be Holy Spirit led and in order to do that you have to get into time with God and and praying and um, reading your word and all of those things that consist of just being in an intimate personal place with him so that he can download all these things and so if you're distracted and you're all over the place and you're not like really focusing, then obviously it's hard. You feel like I'm not doing things right, or at least I do. I feel like I'm not doing things the right way. So I was telling her that and she was like, yep, I I understand that. And she was, you know, and she kind of at one point said, you know, it's funny because I recorded something. And then as I was done recording, the Holy Spirit was like, 
no, that's not what I want to talk. That's not what I want you to talk about uh, this week. I want you to talk about something else until she had to re-record. And so I, that was so encouraging to me because it assures me that it's okay if I feel like maybe the topics are not something that I want to necessarily talk about, but it's what I need to talk about. And like the one today, it's very personal to me again. And when she asked me, she's like, what are you, what are you like currently talking about? What are you sharing? Uh, I told her, I feel like God is asking me and I do truly believe that God is asking me to share my walk, my journey right now, what I'm actively going through, you know, because it's real, it's relatable, it's honest, is the truth. And so if I share that, then that that's going to resonate with someone out there who maybe is new in their walk or who maybe feels like they're not doing enough or maybe they feel, um, you know, like they're in a place of not not conquering or not accomplishing, accomplishing what they should be doing. And so if I share that, if I'm honest with that, then obviously that would help someone. It, 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 so I was telling her that and she was like, yeah. And, you know, and she kind of nodded her head in a way that we all know what that is because it's challenging. Um, as easy as it can seem, me sitting here behind, a, you know, a camera or even on audio as you're listening, as easy as it may seem that I'm doing this because you're like, oh, you know, you're just talking. It's not it's not easy in any way, at least for me right now, because everything that I'm sharing is so personal and not just personal, but you're it's vulnerable and you want to make sure that what you're sharing it's not like you're not being judged on and as much as we shouldn't care about what people think we do we're humans right and so yeah it's just one of these journeys and one of these things that God has called me to do and I'm like okay God I'm gonna do it and it's gonna be hard and it is hard and I don't know how I'm gonna do it and I don't know what I'm gonna talk about half of the time but you're gonna come through and he sure did. He came through with another topic, another episode. And I sure am recording it late at night. But you know what? I don't care because as long as I show up for him, as long as I am doing it, as long as I am actively working in that purpose and that calling that he's he's called me to do or, you know, then I'm I must be doing the right thing. Right. So to get into what we're going to talk about today. I don't think this one will be long because I think this is just a matter of keeping it straight with you and to keep it straight. I think you need to shorten things so that people can just hear what you have to say and let them think about the rest that when you length it out, that you're dragging it. You know, when you drag something on for too long, you lose people. It's like a joke, for example, like you start saying a joke and a few people get it, but not everybody gets it. So you keep repeating the same joke or you're trying to elaborate the joke too much. Now it's no longer a joke. Like no one's going to laugh. Now it's just like, dude, where are you going with this? Right. And so I think this is one of these things that I don't need to drag it. I don't need to make it more than what it is. I just need to keep it to you straight. And I need to tell you what I feel and what I feel like the Holy Spirit for sure gave me. And hopefully that helps you. And hopefully it, it's exactly what you need. So today we're talking about when we feel inadequate and inadequate in our calling, in our purpose or in life, you know, and again, this is personal to me, right? I just kind of shared with you a little bit on how I've been feeling about the podcast and how I feel like I'm not doing things right or I'm not doing enough or my spiritual walk or my spiritual life is not the way that it should be. And so again, it's that like inadequacy of feeling like, mm, like I don't have the right qualities. I don't have the the resume, yeah, uh, not an exact resume, but you know, I don't have the the skills that I should have to do this the right way, the way that maybe other podcasters are doing it nowadays, or the way that preachers or teachers and leaders, what whoever it may be, I'm not to their stature. So I must be inadequate. And so I have been feeling like this. I, I could not tell you. And I think I've been feeling it more now. I've been feeling it even heavier now 
because of what I'm doing. When God calls us to something is big. Okay. When God is calling us to something 99% of the time, and I leave, I say 99 because I truly believe that 1% it's like us because he is our creator, right? He is who is aligning our lives. It's his will, not ours, right? Yes. He does give us free will, but what we want is his will to be done, right? As it says in Matthew, his will be done here on earth as it is in heaven. So 99% of the time, what he calls us to do is things that are outside of our comfort zone. It's things that we don't want to do. It's things that we're like, mm, I don't see that in my future. <gasps> That's not my ministry. Like me doing the nails shop, I didn't want to do that. To me, that was a hobby. Okay, every time I have a client on my chair, um, share. Oh God, this is going to be one of these moments. Nope. I'm going to move up. I'm going to move past it. So my first language is Spanish. I'll, I'll give you, I'll, <laughs> I'll tell you why I say I want to move past that because I ramble. And so I'm trying to work on that, not ramble and just get to the point. But obviously you're probably like, why did she say that? Why did she stumble upon chair? Or maybe why, why does she want to move right along? Um, and oh my gosh, here we go again. I'm rambling, but I just saw a fly. I just saw a fruit fly or a gnat as uh, whatever you call it, fly in front of me. Oh my gosh. So if you see it in a video, ignore it. Okay. I have a little light trap, UV light that's supposed to like catch them. Uh, I don't know how they get in, but there's that one um, friend to be polite <laughs> flying around. So if you see it in the video, just ignore it. Okay. So chair, the word chair. So my first language is Spanish. Okay. I was born and raised in Puerto Rico. Um, I'm blessed and honored that I was able to learn English and that I am bilingual and that I can live in the United States and have the life that I have because I have learned two languages. Cause I do truly believe, um, that when you limit yourself to one language, let's say Spanish, and you move somewhere where that language is maybe not prominent and not that Spanish because Spanish is very popular. But anyways, English is the first language, right? So you limit yourself and then it's harder for you to have resources, you know, jobs, whatever. So you get my point. So if you're Hispanic and you know the S's and H's and the C and H's, like any word that starts with that, it can be hard to pronounce. So every time I say like chicken, I'm probably saying it right this time, but there's times where I don't say it properly or like chair, I'll say share. And it sounds like I'm saying S-H-A-R-E instead of share. And you're probably like, Anna, they both sound the same. I'm telling you, I hear it and other people hear it. Okay. So that's why I wanted to kind of move along with it. Um, so... <laughs> I don't want to get off track and I'm now I'm now my mind is losing its train uh, train of thought but moving on um yes when I have a client on my chair they always ask me right different ones I, especially if it's new ones you know what made you start this and I give them a little bit of the story and how I got started I always say this was a hobby. Like I did not want to do this. And they're like, really? And I'm like, yeah. And how I started doing this was around COVID or doing nails per se. I started doing it around the COVID time. Well, we know, right? Quarantine happened. And so no one could be outside. No one could get their nails done. And that was around the time that TikTok went viral with like all these ways to do nails at home. So I was like, I'm going to do it because I was always and I say was because you probably see right now that I'm bare nails, but I always was I needed my nails done. I needed my nails done. I could not be without nails. I felt naked. I just felt like I just didn't like it. So I was like, oh, I have a way to do my nails at home and it's cheaper. I'm going to do it. And that's how I started. And I just did it as a hobby. But never did I think that I would be preaching the gospel and that I would start my own business while doing nails. Like I really didn't. And I wanted to do the podcast. That was my thing. I was like, I want to do the podcast because I'm a talker. If you've met me, I am a talker. As I just rambled on like three minutes ago, you can tell I'm a talker. I love to talk. Um, even growing up, I always wanted to be a teacher. And so it's that natural. I feel like that is that nature in me to want to teach, to want to talk, to want to just share. And so, um, and this time I'm saying share as in S. S-H-A-A-R-E. Oh, 
<laughs> Anyways, moving on. So that's just me. And so I knew I wanted to do the podcast. And when I originally had the idea of the podcast, this was um, about two years ago, I want to say. And I was not in the right place. The podcast idea was not going to be correct. And then as I came back to God, that podcast idea was still there, was still lingering. Um, there was a few, like I pivoted to different ways and different like routes, like maybe I should do it this way. Maybe I should not. All these different things. Maybe I should do it with a co-host. Maybe I shouldn't do it alone. Maybe God wants me to do it with someone else. Like I was really all over the place, but I knew I wanted to do the podcast. So when God brought up the nails, I was just like, no, I don't want to do that. And for me, it was because I went to cosmetology school um, years ago and I had graduated and, I, and it, it was because I was in a phase that I wanted to know how to do hair. I wanted to beauty, all of that. And I learned that it's not that easy. Like there's a lot of work that goes into it and you have to build up clientele. Then you get clients who are picky. It takes time. It takes hours. Like my ideal was like, I want it to be like a podcast. I just have to sit down and talk. Right. And in the nails you do too. But again, you're working. So anyways, but it kept coming up and I was at church and I would do my nails and people would be like, oh, my gosh, I love your nails. Who does them? And I'm like me. And they were like, I'll pay you. And I'll be like, oh, like I'll brush it off I'll be like, because I didn't want to do it. And time passes by time passes by. And I finally made the decision like, OK, fine, I'm going to do it. And then I thought, well, how am I going to integrate a podcast with a nails business and a podcast that's going to talk about God? You know, because I'm like, okay, that's two different things. A nails business and sharing God in a podcast is two different things. How am I going to do that? And so when I finally made the decision, I, I tell this exact story to my client. I say that I had a name, which was going to be my name because my name is Anna, right? And so I was just going to hyphenate the first letter of my name, A, and then the rest was just going to say nails. So A, nails, that's it. So basically it's like, my name is still there, but then it says nails. That was my idea. And I'm like, but how is this going to be in a podcast? Like what's going to be the name of the podcast? Like I wanted them both to fit. And so fast forward, I finally made the decision and all of that. And actually this was another way that I confirmed that God wanted me to do this was because the day that I made the decision, it was actually evening time that I said, okay, fine, I'm going to do it. God had provided miraculously the money because I had I've been unemployed for months already. I didn't have any money. I wasn't claiming unemployment like I just had no money. God provided when I tell you supernaturally and I and I wish that I can go into it so that I'm I, because if not, the episode is going to be forever and maybe I'll share more testimony on a different episode. But he provided. And so since he provided, I was like, OK, God, you really wanted me to do this. I'll do it. So then I made that decision that morning of that next morning I received. As soon as I wake up, I have a text message from my friend Valerie and uh, Valerie sends me a text message. She's like, I had a dream that you did it, that you had the nail shop and you had your own business and you had like a brunch set up. And I I don't remember verbatim what the text message said, but she basically said, I just had this dream. And I was like are you serious? Like it was just the night before I made the decision. I said, yes, I'm going to do it. And the next morning she sent that. So I was like, okay, yeah, God, it's, God is wanting me to do this. And I still didn't want to do it, but I was like, okay, I have to be obedient. And so I made that decision and trying to think of the idea of the podcast. Then he, I was, you know, in this moment, um, <laughs> And it's funny, but it's true that I was in the restroom. And I think I may have mentioned this in an episode or maybe not. But I was in the restroom it was in the middle of the night because I'm again trying to now I'm like trying to put all the logistics together. How is this going to work? What's the name? All of that. And so I'm in the restroom and I was just doing number one. And then I'm sitting there and I was just like, OK, nails, what's this? Oh, the nails. And I was just like the nails. And like it started ringing to me and I'm like, huh, the nails. And then I'm like the nails, the nails that he took for us on the cross. Oh my gosh. And it's also the nails because I do nails. And I laughed and I laughed because I'm like, you would give me the name of the business and the podcast as I am urinating, as I'm using the restroom. And uh, he does have a sense of humor, guys. Okay. So anyways, all that to say, this is what God wanted me to do. At least the nails business part of it. But I didn't want to do it. And I ultimately 
yes, there was a part of me that didn't want to do it because it was a lot of work. Like I wanted to kind of be lazy and I'm like, uh, I wanted to just do the easier route. But there was also that part of me that felt inadequate because I did nails as a hobby. I did nails just for myself, for my sisters. I was not a nail artist. I don't draw. Right. And we know when you're doing nails, you have to have like that precision, that that artsy side because you're doing designs, you're doing artwork. And so I'm like, I felt inadequate. And I was like, this is not for me. Little by little, I started feeling more confident in that. And as I felt more confident in the nails business, then in the podcast, it became a bigger feeling of, or oh, you're definitely inadequate for this. And it was because I just, it's a big calling sharing God. And it started feeling that way because of how my life was going, like my habits, my routine, how things were going. I was just like, how is it that God is calling me to share the gospel, to do, you know, this and talk about him and, and talk about tough subjects and topics that are meant to challenge people and are meant to like awaken people and let them know like he's coming soon or you need to accept him in your life or you need to start claiming the calling that he's, but you know, uh, speaking over your life. How am I going to do that? And yet in these other areas I'm lacking, you know, and I, again, I felt inadequate. And so I, I started thinking to myself, like, how did I feel inadequate? And I started going down the line. I was like, okay, well, my, la my lack of knowledge, I've been in, you know, my relationship with God in a little over a year, and I don't know the entirety of the Bible. And I actually just had a recent client who shared the same thing that she, she sometimes, and I do the same, where we compare ourselves to other people who can like recite verses, or who have like, a prayer language that's like bold and powerful and, you know, and they speak authority over people's life. And that was another thing that I, I felt inadequate in, in my prayer life and how my prayer life was not consistent in my Bible reading, how I didn't know the Bible and how I wasn't doing it enough. How was that inconsistency in my spiritual life in the unbelief of the purpose? Like I see that he's doing all these different things in my life and he's providing and he's using me and he's speaking through people. OK, he's speaking through people that I a either know or people that I barely know and will come up to me and will be like, what you're doing, it's exactly what God wants you to do. And he's telling me that he has plans for you and whatever else. But there's still that unbelief on my end. So I'm like, how is it that you're calling me to this? And yet I'm still this person who doesn't believe fully in this purpose and my faith. Right. Because that ties into faith. And we talked about that in the last episode and being like, my faith is not where it should be. So I felt inadequate. And then there's that side that also is the human nature, the fleshly nature that sometimes I can be judgmental. And let's be honest, guys, as much as we say we don't judge people, we do. OK, we do. And it may not be in the most harsh way, but we judge people. It can be like something so simple, like someone will walk out there and they'll wear something crazy. And you'll be like, why would she wear that? Or if you see that someone is in a relationship and they got back to their ex who was toxic, whatever it may be, even in the Christian world. OK, OK, we're not perfect. You'll be like, why would she get back to that? There's that like judgment. It's not like a harsh like you're just judging them and you're like, oh, my gosh, they're like less than. But there is a fleshly nature in us that we can be judgmental. And there's also that anger when we get angry at people um, and we hold that like we hold on to that anger to 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 hate or whatever. It may not be hate, but again, just anger in general or when we unforgive like there's when there's unforgiveness like for me. And this is me speaking like these are things that I I've listed for myself that I'm like, man, there are people that I've said I've forgiven, but there's still a part of me that truly believes that I have not gotten over it, that I have not fully, truly forgiven them. So, again, it makes me feel like how is God telling me to preach his God? and doing all these things. And yet I'm still feeling this way. I'm still thinking this way. Materialistic materialism. It's like worrying about what I have and what I don't have. I, I do that a lot. I'll be honest. I do that a lot. I'll be like, man, I should have a car. I don't have a car. I should have a car by now. I should have this. I should have um, whatever, like being materialistic and worrying about 
the better things. And then also comparison and sitting there and comparing myself to other people, comparing to myself to other podcasters. It's something that I, again, with the podcast, I felt inadequate because I'm like, I'm not where they're at. I'm not doing things that they are doing. And and feeling that way. And then also my personality and feeling like I'm too bold, like I'm too bold in excessive amounts. So I'm not afraid to say what I'm thinking. I'm not afraid to say something that maybe will rub you off the wrong way. I'm not. That's just me because I don't like when people sugarcoat things to me. So I'm not going to sugarcoat it to you. OK, but that can be to me. I feel inadequate because when I do that, I'll be honest, 90 percent of the time or maybe I shouldn't say 90, 80, whatever percentage of the time, what I've received in return, it's not a, oh, wow, Anna, you're right. No, it's a Anna. The people get like defensive or they close up or there's a guard because what I'm saying, it's things that probably not a lot of people are saying because they're challenging their truth, their truths that that seem harsh, but they're really not. They're just truths that need to be revealed. So I feel in that because I'm like, maybe I'm too bold. Or I'm also easily distracted or how I don't have the support from the people close to me. That was a big one that I feel like I've been um, struggling with, that there are certain people that I, I wish that they were like truly, truly supporting me and like coming to me and telling me, man, I see what you're doing. I'm proud of you. And I don't see that. I don't even see a like. I don't even see a share. I don't see a post. I don't see anything from these people that I, I feel I expected that they should do that. And so I'm like, I must be inadequate because they don't see it. They're the, the closest people to me. And so all of these different things would make me feel inadequate. And I don't know what makes you feel inadequate in your calling, but this is what it was for me. And so as I felt inadequate and I've been feeling this way for a very long time. And there was a while ago that I went through a sozo and a sozo is inner healing and deliverance as well. And it's like a, it's, it almost seems like a counseling session, but it's deeper than that. And they have that at our church and I believe multiple churches also, but I had my first sozo, um, a few months back. And I was still feeling this way, right? And at one point, this verse came to mind and I remembered it from The Chosen. I'll be honest. Um, if you haven't watched that show, it's like a show that's bringing like the gospels, part of the gospels to like live. Like it's just bringing it um, into like this visual um, presentation. It's honestly, I love it. Um, and so... There was the very first episode of season one. Um, this verse is, is said and it's Isaiah 43, one. And so during that sozo, and we're like basically almost done. We've gone through the session. We've done all this. And at the end, I'm just like, do you know what Isaiah 43, one is? Or no, no, no. I didn't say Isaiah 43, one, excuse me. I said, do you know which verse is this? Like what book and what verse is this? Because I remember the words, but I didn't know the book and the verse. And so they were like, no, I don't. And so they looked it up really quickly in the Bible. And then they told me, you know, Isaiah 43, one, that's the verse. And so I'm going to read that to you. And I'm kind of, kind of walk you through on what I feel I've gotten from that verse and what I feel like God is also trying to tell us and you about why are about why you're feeling inadequate like right now you feel inadequate but this is the truth okay that inadequacy that that state of mind that you feel like you're inadequate it's a lie from the pit of hell is a lie of the enemy and you need to just rebuke it and you need to just cast it off and do not claim it do not partner with it because it's not true it's not you you are adequate. Okay. You are adequate. So this verse, Isaiah 43, one, and I'll say this just to give you a background. Um, Isaiah 43, one, this is, it says, um, Israel's only savior. So we know that God, um, saved Israel right from captivity and from being slaves and got them to the promised land. And he, throughout that, he did a bunch of things to like save them. He helped them. He is their savior. And so he's talking to Israel in this, in this moment. Now, obviously we know that the Bible can be taken in so many different ways. And so in these, 
words, I believe in this moment and what we're talking about, God is really trying to get you to understand who you are, who he created you to be, who he's called you to be. Okay, nothing more, nothing less, because he's your creator. He knows you. He knows you and your flaws. So in this verse, he's trying to emphasize that again. He wants you to believe it. He wants you to read this verse over and over and over again till he finally reveals the true identity that he's trying to give you and you're not claiming the true purpose that he's trying to have for your life and you're not claiming the true calling that he's trying to give you in your life and you're not claiming. Okay, so Isaiah 43, one. And I'm going to go a little bit down because it starts. Um, you know what? I'll just read it. <laughs> it says, but now thus says the Lord, he who created you, O Jacob, he who formed you, O Israel, fear not, for I have redeemed you. I have called you by name. You are mine. Oh, I love that verse. When he gave that to me in the Sozo, I was crying. I was crying because I truly cannot understand. And I think till this day, sometimes I want to understand, but I really don't fully how he loves me so much and why he has just redeemed me in the way that he has, even with the life that I led and the things that I, I did and the way that I despised him and questioned him. And I almost feel like I felt hate towards God, but not fully, but for sure with the things that I went through and had to endure, I was angry with him and his love is just so unconditional. His love is something that I wish I can truly, fully, fully understand because we only know what we get from the, from the word and what he lets us feel at times, but like only he feels it right. Only he gets to feel that love that he feels for us. And it must be so big. And so I love that verse. And so I want to break it down to you. And it starts with saying, um, right. He says, uh, he who created you. So he created you. He made you. He made you who you are. Okay. He created Anna. He created whoever it is that's listening. He created you. And then it says he formed you. And there's a verse that's in uh, Jeremiah um, 1, 5. And it's also a verse that's very uh, popular as well. And it says, before I formed you in the womb, I knew you. And before you were born, I consecrated you. I appointed you a prophet to the nations. So he's just like, I knew you before before you even came into this world, before your, your parents even knew they were going to have you, I formed you. That goes to say he knows every bit of you. OK, even the version that you don't know, because you didn't before he formed you, you, you don't know that version. You don't know what he saw. You don't know the purpose that he saw, that the vision, the calling that he saw the minute he said, this is who I'm creating. This is who I'm forming. You don't know that version, but he does. Then it says, fear not, for I have redeemed you. And I think these, this is for the people that have, have made a choice to, to receive God and Christ into their lives. Because when you do that, when you finally say, say, you know what, God, I give you my life. You are my Lord. You are my savior. He restores you. And I know that because the minute I said, okay, fine. When I hit that final point in my life where I was like, I, that's it. I can't, I can't do it alone anymore. I need you. I need you. It was like instant love, instant like strength. He restored me. And he washes you clean. So he literally strips you from your old self. He's like this person who you were, the identity that you, you, you had is not yours. You're new. You're clean. And then he, you accepted him and he accepted you as you were. 
in your rut, in your brokenness, in your sinfulness, he accepted you. But then as you accepted him, he created the new you, the true you. Because again, and I believe that in this world in general, there's a big identity issue. And he knows your true identity. And so he's calling you because he has a purpose for you. And that you is that you that's now accepting Christ, the one that's seeking him, the one that's trying to better the relationship with him, the one that's pushing forward to get through to the addiction and break that off, to break through the sex and break that off, to break through whatever it may be that you're trying to truly let go of. He's just like, okay. Because you're doing it, because you have accepted me, because you're putting in the work, I have purpose for you. He wants to use you. And then it says, I have called you by name. Your name. Who is Anna? Anna is the person who lacks knowledge. I don't know much of the Bible. That's true. Anna is inconsistent in her spiritual life. Anna has a fleshly nature that she still is sinful at times and judgmental and compares and unforgives. It's, it's, it's deals with unforgiveness at times and has trouble with her faith and has trouble with her prayer life. That's Anna who gets easily distracted. That's Anna. But because of who I am, he knows me and he knows that in my current state, who Anna is right now, if he uses me, if he gives me this big calling through me, he shows his greatness. Through me, he knows he can show the glory that is God. Because this, what I'm doing is not me, it's him. And he knows because of our faultiness, because of what we lack in at times, we'll need him. That we will need him every day. That we need more of him and less of us. That if we were perfect, why would we need him? I was reminded this also through one of my clients. And she reminded me of that because again, I've just been very honest. And I said, I don't, I just don't feel like, I didn't say adequate, but I implied it and basically feeling like I'm just, I just feel like I'm not in the right place to do what I'm doing. And she reminded me and she said, when God gave you the calling, when he said, Anna, I want you to do this. You were in the place where you were broken. You weren't all there. You still weren't fully reading your Bible. You still weren't fully in your prayer. He chose you then. So he knew, he knew that you weren't perfect. And yet he said, I want you. And I believe he does that. And she said that because he chooses the underdogs. He chooses those people that we do not expect. Because it really shows his greatness. And so. It ends with you are mine. He sees you. And he sees your flaws and he sees how you mess up and he sees how you sin and he sees how you idolize other things. Because let's let's keep it real. We idolize way too many things in this world. We idolize marriage. We idolize social media. We idolize people like our like our partners. We idolize them. We idolize music. We idolize a church. OK. When you do that, you're creating other small gods. They're your gods. When he's the only God. He's the only one. OK. So you idolize. Other things. And yet he says you are his. How much, how valuable must we be to him? Like, 
How valuable are we that even when we mess up, even when he knows tomorrow we're going to sin in whatever way that is, even when he knows we're not going to preach, uh, no, not preach, pray. Even when he knows we're not going to pray to him tomorrow, that we're going to forget and we're going to get distracted and we're going to choose fun and we're going to choose friends and we're going to choose whatever it, above him. Even when he knows that, even when he knows that we're going to say no initially when he calls us to something, he says, I want you to do it. I want you. I didn't choose anyone else. I chose you. I called you to do this. How valuable must you be that he said, I don't want no one else but you. That's crazy to me. And as I was doing this, I'm like, how valuable I am. Like, I'm so valuable to him. Like, no one is going to love you the way that God, I just have to put that in there. No one is going to love you the way that God loves you. Okay, no one, no one, no one, no one, no one. So we're valuable, so valuable that he died for us. So valuable that he never leaves us, like literally never leaves us. So valuable that he wants us, he calls us to do his work. And I emphasize that he wants us, not needs, he wants us because God doesn't need us to do his work for him. Can, can we, can we say this? He doesn't need us. He's God. He can do it all on his own, but he doesn't want to do that. He's like, no, I want my sons and daughters in this world to go out there, do my work, build disciples, preach the good news, challenge people, be bold, step out of your comfort zone, do what you need to. And I'm going to use you and I'm going to equip you because I am God and I never leave you and I will never forsake you. And I know that what I've called you to do is big. And I know what I've called you to do seems scary. And I know what I've called you to do is far off from your skills. But I want you. I don't need you. I want you. Insane. So if you have a calling. If you have a purpose, if right now God is calling you to something and he's like, this is it, this is it. And you know, okay, because when you know, you know, okay, I don't have to go too deep into details for that. How I know that God is calling me to do this and how I know that this is what he wants for me is because no matter how distracted I get, no matter how heavy I feel, how tired I am, whatever life throws at me, at the end, I'm like, nah, I got to do this. I have to do this. I want to do this. There's like a fire in me that as uncomfortable as I feel and as inadequate as I feel sometimes, I feel good. I'm like, no, I, I need to do this because there is that flesh and the spiritual that will fight, that will tug. But you know, when something is from God, there's a part of you that yearns it. There's a part of you that wants it because you're like, man, this, this is going to be big. This is going to be good. This is going to be for somebody. This is, this is for, for something that God wants to do. So whatever he's calling you to do, do it and simply get over yourself. Okay. Get over yourself. It's not about you. It's not about you. It's about him. It's about him. It all goes back to him. Be who he created you to be. Your calling is not too big for you. Don't worry about the support from others. Because this is not about them either. This is about God. This is about God. When we do something and we put ourselves in the equation, we're like, well, God will... I'll say this. He's our center, right? He's our creator. And we know that. We know that he is the God of, of everything. So if we know that, 
Everything means everything. That means your life, your marriage, your relationships, your job, your work, your business, your podcast, your teaching career, whatever it may be. He's there. He created. He, he's there. He put you there for a reason. And he's in everything. So if he's in everything, why not just get over ourselves and be like, you know what, God, you're in it. And if you're in it, it's going to work. If you're in it, it's going to grow. If you're in it, I don't need to worry about anything. Now, of course, we're going to worry. Of course, we're going to doubt. Of course, we're going to get anxiety. And of course, we're going to be like, oh, this is this is too much. I get there. I'm there. I, I'm there. But we need to quickly get over that part of ourselves, let go of that identity and start reading his word and start seeing what he's telling us. You are mine. I redeemed you. I formed you. I created you. Who knows you better than me? Nobody. So he saw something in you. He saw something in you. He sees something in you that no one else has. He's called you, which means you, you are adequate. You have a quality that no one else has that he says, because of this, I need you. Because of who Anna is, I've called her to be a voice. I've called her to be bold. And when you worry about your personality, I want to say this because this is what I struggle with a lot. When you struggle with your personality and you feel like your personality stands out too much and it makes other people feel uncomfortable, that's a good thing. That's a good thing. And I have to tell this to myself right now, too. That's a good thing. Make people feel uncomfortable. That's a them. They need to figure out why they feel uncomfortable. You are here in this world. You are bold because God created you bold. And we need to be bold because there's not a lot of boldness in the world. Actually, let me rephrase that. There's boldness, but the wrong one. People want to be bold in the dumb things. People want to be bold when they want to judge somebody. People want to be bold and sharing, um, you know, gossip. And they want to put people down and judge. And people want to be bold and exalting all these different types of musics that it's just absurd and lyrics and and ways of being and dressing and trends and people want to be bold in all these different things but when it comes to the god thing because we know and i said it in the last episode because we know as we put god out there we're going to lose friends we're going to lose followers we're going to lose people we're going to lose popularity we're going to be ridiculed we're going to be judged we're going to be questioned we're going to basically be put on a cross what? He did it for us. So why not do it for him? So I hope that this episode has challenged you, has motivated you, has finally shaken you up and has awake, opened up your eyes and finally have, has gotten you to believe that you are adequate. You are more than adequate. You are enough that you are valuable, that you are his. So thank you guys so much for your support. Thank you for following. Thank you for hearing everything that I have to say. Please share, please rate, please put it on your stories, put it on your Facebook feed, put it on your threads, put it on TikTok, which I've created a TikTok now. Um, and it's just like any other, uh, all of my other usernames, The Nails Podcast. Share it, share it, share it, share it, because this is about God. And if we all know that this is not about Anna and it's not about getting Anna followers and it's not about getting Anna put out there, but it's about getting the word of God and the message of God and the good news of God and, and what God wants to do for this world and what God wants his, his children to know, then we ought to share it, then we ought to pass it along. So thank you, thank you, thank you for your support. I love you. God loves you. Stay blessed.